let's let's talk about the big galactic things and how we might be able to leverage them to travel fast. I know this is a little bit science fiction, but you know, uh, ideas of wormholes and yeah. the ideas at the edge of black holes that reveal to us that this fabric of space time is uh, could be messed with. Yeah, perhaps is that at all a, an interesting thing for you? Uh, I mean, in in your, in looking out at the universe and studying it as you have, is that also a possible like a dream for you? that we might be able to find clues how we can actually use it to improve yeah. our transportation. It's an interesting thought. I'm certainly excited by the potential physics that suggests this kind of faster than light travel effectively or, you know, yeah. cutting the distance to make it very very short through a wormhole or something like that. Possible? No. Well, you know, call me not very imaginative, but based on today's knowledge of physics, which I realize, you know, people have gone down that rabbit hole. And, yeah. you know, a century ago, Lord Kelvin, one of the greatest physicists of all time, said that all of fundamental physics is done. Yep. The rest is just engineering. And guess what? Then came special relativity, quantum physics, general relativity, how wrong he was. Yep. So let me not be another Lord Kelvin. <laughs> On the other hand, I think we know a lot more now about what we know and what we don't know and what the physical limitations are. And to me, most of these schemes, if not all of them, seem very far-fetched, if not impossible. So travel through wormholes, for example. You know, it appears that for a non-rotating black hole, that's just a, a complete no-go because the, the singularity is a point-like singularity and you have to reach it to traverse the wormhole and you get squished by the singularity, okay? Now for a rotating black hole, it turns out there is a way to pass through the event horizon, the boundary of the black hole and avoid the singularity and go out the other side or even traverse the, the donut hole-like singularity. In the case of a rotating black hole, it's a ring singularity. So there's actually two theoretical ways you could get through a rotating black hole or a charged black hole. Not that we expect charged black holes to exist in nature because they would quickly bring in the opposite charge so as to neutralize themselves. But rotating black holes, definitely reality. We, we now have good evidence for them. Do they have traversable wormholes? Probably not because it's still the case that when you go in, you go in with so much energy that it, it, it either squeezes the wormhole shut or you encounter a whole bunch of incoming and outgoing energy that vaporizes you. It's called the mass inflation instability, and it just sort of vaporizes you. Nevertheless, you know, you could imagine, well, you're in some vapor form, but if you make it through, maybe you could, you know, reform or something. Yeah. So it's still information. Yeah, it's still information. It's scrambled information, but there's a way maybe of bringing it back, right? Yeah. But then the thing that really bothers me is that as soon as you have this possibility of traversal of a wormhole, you have to come to grips with a fundamental problem. And that is that you could come back to your universe at a time prior to your leaving, and you could essentially prevent your grandparents from ever meeting. This is called the grandfather paradox, right? And if they never met, and if your parents were never born, and if you were never born, how would you have made the journey to prevent the history from allowing you to exist, right? It's, it's, a, it's, a, causal, it's a violation of causality, of cause and effect. Now, physicists such as myself take causality violation very, very seriously. <laughs> We've never seen it. You took a stand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's one of these, right, the back to the future type movies, right? And yeah, you have to work things out in such a way that yeah. you don't mess things up, right? Some people say that, well, you come back to the universe, but you come back in such a way that you cannot affect your journey. Um, but then, I mean, that, that seems kind of uh, contrived to me. Or some say that you end up in a different universe, and this also goes into the, the many different types of the multiverse hypothesis and the many worlds interpretation and all that. But again, then it's not the universe from which you left, right? And you don't come back to the universe from which you left. And so you're not really going back in time to the same universe. 
And you're not even going forward in time necessarily then to the same universe, right? You're ending up in some other universe. So, so you've, you've, what have you achieved, right? You've, <laughs> <laughs> you've traveled, but you've you didn't. Traveled. <laughs> you uh, you ended up yeah. in a different place than you started. Well, uh, in and, more ways than one. Yeah, and then then there's is... this idea, um, the Alcubierre drive, where you warp space time in front of you yes. so as to greatly reduce the distance, and you can expand the space time behind you. Yes. So you're sort of riding a wave through space time. Yeah. But the problem I see with that, beyond the practical difficulties and the energy requirements, and yeah. by the way, how do you get out of this bubble through which you're, you know, riding this wave of space time? And yeah, how do you Miguel Alcubierre acknowledged all these things. He said this is purely theoretical, fanciful, and all that. But a fundamental problem I see is that you'd have to get to those places in front of you so as to change the shape of space time, so as to make the journey quickly. But but mm -hmm. to get there, you you got there in the normal way, at a speed considerably less than that of light. So in a sense, you you haven't saved any time, right? You might as well have just taken that journey and gotten to where you were going. Yeah, there's a, right. You what have you done? You it's not like you snap your fingers and say, okay, let that space there be compressed, and then I'll make it over to Alpha Centauri in the next month. You, you can't snap your fingers and do that. Yeah, it, and but yeah, and we're sort of assuming that we can fix all the biological stuff that requires for humans to persist, uh, uh, persist through that whole process. Because ultimately, it might boil down to just extending the life of the of the human in some form, whether it's through the robot, through the digital form, or through, or actually just figuring out genetically how to live forever. Because that's that, right. Th that journey that you mentioned, the long journey, might be different if somehow our, our understanding of genetics, of our understanding of our own biology, yeah. all that kind of stuff would, uh, that's another trajectory well, that right. possibly- Well, right, if you could put us into some sort of suspended animation, you know, yeah. hibernation or something, and greatly increase the lifetime. And so these 10,000 generations I talked about, what do they care? It's just yeah. one generation yeah. and they're asleep, okay? Yeah. Just they're, a long nap. So then you can do it. It's still not easy, right? Because you've got yeah. some big old huge colony and that- just through E equals MC squared, right? That's a lot of mass. That's a lot of stuff to um, to accelerate. The Newtonian kinetic energy is gigantic, right? So you're still not home free, but at least you're not trying to do it in a short amount of clock time, mm -hmm. right? Which, if you look at E equals MC squared, requires truly unfathomable amounts of energy because the energy is sort of, it's, it's your rest mass, m naught c squared divided by the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. Mm -hmm. And if your listeners want to just sort of stick into their pocket calculator, as v over c approaches one, <laughs> that one over the square root of one minus v squared over c squared approaches infinity. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do it in zero time, you'd need an infinite amount of energy. That's basically why you can't reach, let alone exceed the speed of light for a particle moving through a pre-existing space. It's that it takes an infinite amount of energy to do so.